Two of the most cerebral rockers just knew that they had a great song for their debut album, and it had hit potential, but it lacked vibrancy and passion. So this duo followed a deep gut feeling that they needed to bring in a musician that would uh, provide a spark that they desperately needed to take the song to the next level. Up next, the story of a hired gun who stepped into a recording studio in Santa Monica to pull a song out of the doldrums and turn it into one of the greatest guitar tracks ever. Coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you ever got yelled at by your parents to turn your stereo down when you were blasting it, you know, when you were growing up, you're gonna be right at home with this channel. Make sure to subscribe below so you never miss out on our daily content. Stories straight from the legends. We also have a Patreon. Take a look at that other content there. It also helps our mission of curating this music history. This song breakdown is sponsored by Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I'm wearing right now. When you go to zenny.com, you can craft the color, the shape, and style of your specs and add on so many amazing features. Go check it out today. Now it's time for another edition of Number One in Our Hearts, where we break down a song that was so great that it should have been a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. We discuss the song, we place it in its historical context. We also talk about the other songs that were ahead of it. Uh, and the genius band that we'll be discussing next, they never did have a number one hit. If there was any justice in this world, they should have had about five or six. They came closest with their 1974 hit, Ricky Don't Lose That Number, that hit number four. Bet you can guess who the band is. Ricky don't lose that number, you don't wanna call nobody. But of all the songs that should have hit number one by the Dan, the one we're covering today is a no-brainer to me. You know, so Steely Dan co-founder Donald Fagan, he was going through the effects of a tough breakup with a woman that he'd been romantically involved with, I guess, for several years. Uh, twisting the knife of emotional agony was when he discovered that after all the things the couple had done and seen, she'd found another man. Fagan recoiled and struck back at his ex-lover by penning a song that expressed his exasperation. Your everlasting summer and you can see it fading fast. So you grab a piece of something that you think is gonna last. You can see it fading fast. So you grab a piece of something that you think is gonna last. Well, you wouldn't even know a diamond if you held it in your hand. The things you think are precious, I can't understand. Just pure poetry from the Dan. And if you held it in your hand, the things you think are precious, I can't understand. A powerful opening verse with a measured scathing lyric that marked the making of one of the all-time greatest rockers. Reeling in the Years by the great Steely Dan. Are you reeling in the years? Stowing away the As a heartbroken victim, uh, Fagan laid on the guilt trip on his ex-lover even thicker in the chorus. Are you reeling in the years? Stowing away the time. Are you gathering up the tears? Have you had enough of mine? Have you had enough of mine? Are you reeling in? Donald collaborated with best friend and indivisible wingman of Steely Dan, Walter Becker, to compose the music for Reelin' in the Years with a plan to include the track uh, on the band's critically important debut record, Can't Buy a Thrill. It was set for release in 1972 with one of the greatest album covers ever. Even after a dissatisfying uh, first attempt to lay down the track in the recording studio, Becker and Fagan trusted that they had something really special uh, with Reelin' in the Years but they actually felt that it was missing something that would uh, jumpstart the, the song's sonic energy. They came to the conclusion that what the track really needed was a catchy guitar riff with gratifying guitar solos. Steely Dan already had two amazing guitarists in tow. I mean, Jeff Skunk Baxter, as well as co-founder Denny Dias. But whatever Skunk and Denny were doing in the studio on Reeling in the Years uh, just wasn't cutting it for Fagan and Becker. So they elected to reach out to guitarist Elliot Randall to see if he had the magic touch for the intro, the solos, uh, and the outro. The roots of the relationship between Fagan, Becker, and Randall went all the way back to 1969. That's when the three musicians played with Jay and the Americans. I want her. 
were in the twilight of their run as a hit machine between 1962 and 1969. Fagan and Becker played on Jay and the Americans' last top 20 single, Walking in the Rain. Like in the rain. Uh, which was co written by the husband and wife powerhouse, Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil, and of course the mercurial producer, Phil Spector. During their brief stint with Jay and the Americans, Fagan and Becker performed under pseudonyms. Donald Fagan's alias was Tristan Fabriani. And Walter Becker chose Gus Mailer for his fictitious handle. Elliot Randall was the lead guitarist for early demos of Fagan and Becker's music prior to the formation of Steely Dan. The demos represented months of work in the studio to record those early demos, but the music uh, was received with very little interest from the record label, as the story sometimes goes. Of course, until the, the tapes miraculously found their way to producer Gary Katz, who convinced Jay Lasker, the president of ABC Dunhill Records, to sign the duo. The original Fagan and Becker material featuring Elliot Randall on guitar uh, led to the assembly of Steely Dan that was in Los Angeles, 1971. Fagan and Becker invited Randall to be an official member of Steely Dan when they put the group together, but uh, he politely declined. Now, it wasn't long after the official formation of Steely Dan that Elliot also moved to LA, so the timing for him to be hired uh, for the band uh, or by the band to play on Camp By a Thrill was really perfect. Elliot arrived at the Village Recorder Studios in Santa Monica, California to listen to the raw, uh, flat versions of Reeling in the Years, if you will. Uh, as Randall recalls, the change ups in the song where Fagan and Becker wanted to add guitar parts were not very complex. So he grabbed his 63 Stratocaster and nailed the first pass. I mean, everyone in the studio were just absolutely thrilled with Randall's incredible one-take precision. Uh, then the musicians looked through the glass at the assistant engineer who turned white as a ghost. <laughs> Can you even imagine? This is what he said. I'm so sorry, guys. I forgot to press the record button. So Elliot Randall uh, made a second pass and he nailed it again, this time with the record button pressed. Now, Randall's second pass was the take that was used for the final recording of Reeling in the Years, although it could have been a first take. Randall actually claims that that first pass at the solo was actually better than the second one that ended up as the finished product. Since the first pass uh, wasn't recorded, you know, we'll never know just how good it really was, but the guitar solos that we hear on Reeling in the Years I mean, they're so sensational, so spectacular, it's really hard to imagine a version that's superior. I mean, is it possible to exceed perfection? Maybe with a Steely Dan record. I've heard it a thousand times and it somehow gets better every listen. The session with Elliot Randall to record Reeling in the Years was astonishing in so many ways. Think about this for a second. Uh, there was nothing written down for Randall to study and very little dialogue about what the band actually wanted him to do in the solo or in, in the song. Randall just played on instinct after hearing playback of the music that they wanted him to play over. And in a matter of minutes, he delivered exactly what Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, perfectionists, were looking for in one take. Or I guess technically two takes. Skunk Baxter uh, provided the harmony parts, but Randall's entire lead and intro answers solo structure, and the end solo was really one continuous take delivered through a surprisingly simple setup. Unbelievable. I mean, it was Randall's old Strat, the same guitar that he'd been playing since, I guess, 1965, plugged directly into an Ampeg SVT amp and mic'd with a single AKG 414. Elliot revealed that his uh, vaunted solo in Reeling in the Years just came to him spontaneously at that inspired moment. Uh, in retrospect, Elliot found that what he was playing in the introductory measures of the solo on Reeling in the Years was the equivalent of how a jazz saxophonist would mimic the melody of a song. Elliot was essentially playing a chord structure in a style uh, really that paralleled Donald Fagan's vocal technique, adding some really cool twists. I love this part. Away the time. Randall's jazz sensibilities uh, that guided his artistic 
process in the studio matched the credo that was practiced by Donald Fagan and Walter Becker to create distinctive music, utilizing jazz chords and progressions. That's why they believed that Elliot Randall was the answer, the perfect answer to bring Rillin in the years to life and why they wanted him to be a permanent part of the group of Steely Dan. Uh, some of the most revered guitarists in the history of rock music have cited Elliot Randall's performance on Reeling in the Years as the finest solos ever played. Think about this. Guns N' Roses' highly regarded Axeman Slash calls it one of the best. And Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page, yeah, Jimmy Page, who many list as one of the, the top five rock guitarists, if not top three, he calls Randall's first solo and Reeling in the Years his favorite solo of all time. High praise, indeed, man, I can't even believe it. The other thing that makes this song so spectacular is Donald Fagan's just heart-wrenching vocal. I mean, Fagan opens up his chest and he exposes his broken heart, especially in that last verse when he says, I spent a lot of money and I spent a lot of time. The trip we made to Hollywood is etched upon my mind. I love how he sings that. I spent a lot of time. The trip we made to Hollywood is etched upon my mind. So he gave everything that he had to this relationship. But it's the last few lines that are just a dagger to the heart and how he sings them. You not only hear uh, the pain in his amazing vocal, but it envelops your whole being. After all the things we've done and seen, you find another man, the things you think are useless, I can't understand. You find another man, the things you think are useless, I can't understand. I mean, we have all been there. I remember at the end of my marriage, uh, this was a song that I listened to incessantly. Not only because of Fagan's universal message, but because of the, the openness of his measured expression. I mean, opening up your soul to uh, another human being so nakedly and exposing your deepest thoughts and feelings while investing every minute of years to someone who betrays you almost without thought. Someone who you thought was, you know, maybe your soulmate. Um, they end up being a complete stranger. I mean, almost two decades removed from the breakup of my marriage, having been happily married now for 16 years, I mean, when I hear this song, it takes me right back to that immense pain when it all came crashing down, you know? Heartbreak has been written and sung about since the beginning of time. I mean, come on. But this song is so unique in that it has the, the ability to both comfort and crush your soul at the very same time. I mean, not many songs have that mystical power. When Fagan's voice and Randall's guitar duet on this song, it's just incomparable. I mean, it just cuts you to the bone. Are you reeling in the years? Away the now, Reeling in the Years was released as the second single from Can't Buy a Thrill, following uh, the number six success of Do It Again. Uh, the song just missed giving Steely Dan their second consecutive top 10 pop hit peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100, that was in 73. Now the week that Rillin' in the Years peaked, tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree was spending its fourth week at number one by Tony Orlando and Don. I think we could swap those songs for just one week. What do you think? Tell me in the comments, I'd love to hear. Walter Becker and Donald Fagan again asked Elliot Randall to become a member of Steely Dan at that moment after that happened as they did two years prior. Randall thanked them, but he respectfully declined. I mean, Elliot felt that the dynamics of Steely Dan would make the group dissolve after the third studio album, which is exactly what happened. Uh, the recruitment of Randall was the beginning of Fagan and Becker's penchant for hiring studio performers to work with them on their records with no lasting loyalty to any particular musician. Nearly every musician that performed on a Steely Dan record after Pretzel Logic in 74 was an enlisted session player. And the list includes some, just some heavy hitters in rock and jazz. I mean, you got Michael McDonald. Rick Derringer, David Sanborn, Joe Sample, Larry Carlton, Leslie Miller, Ray 
Timothy B. Schmidt. And Mark Knopfler. With that kind of elite talent, it's no wonder why the musicianship on a Steely Dan record is so exquisite, and it made sense uh, with the genius of Fagan and Becker. Steely Dan was ultimately Fagan and Becker, and now that Walter Becker is gone, it's, uh, of course, solely Donald Fagan's band. Although Randall rejoined Steely Dan to perform forth on their fourth LP, Katie Light, in 1975, and their fifth album, The Royal Scam, that was in 76, he remained an independent contractor, essentially. After reeling in the years, became a big sensation for Steely Dan. Randall's stellar work on the track uh, generated a ton of music industry acclaim. He started to receive offers from other artists and managers. Uh, Randall was asked to perform as a touring member of Shanana in uh, 74. Like like 1980, the late comedic legend John Belushi invited Randall to be the musical director for the Blues Brothers. He turned him down. Jeff Percaro and David Page offered Randall a spot to be a founding member of Toto. Rejected that one too. These are just head scratchers for sure. As a coveted session player, Randall has mixed it up with the Doobie Brothers, Carly Simon, Peter Wolf, uh, Tom Rush, Gene Simmons, as well as Peter Frampton, among many others. He's also performed with the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra and the American Symphony Orchestra and was a music consultant for Saturday Night Live. <laughs> His film soundtracks are many. Some of those include The Warriors, uh, The Blues Brothers, music from the motion picture soundtrack Fame, uh, Heart of Dixie, also looking for an echo. As highly praised as Reelin in the Years has been, Walter Becker actually was uh, critical of the song. He called it dumb but effective. I don't get that one. Both Fagan and Becker seem to have an aversion to their hits, really, though, uh, as well as crowds and public adulation. Oftentimes, the set list for a live Steely Dan concert, it doesn't include the band's most popular songs. I know from experience, uh, to the many that I've seen, these guys play exactly what they want to, whether you like it or not. Fagan once stated that uh, anything intended to move huge masses of people is politically offensive to me. That's his quote. His 2013 autobiography, Eminent Hipsters, paints a polarizing portrait of the audiences that go to see Steely Dan perform in concert which actually seems pretty hypocritical. In the book, Fagan breaks down several of his least favorite cities to play with a, just a malicious commentary of the people from those cities that attend those particular concerts. Uh, Donald's natural motive in his writing and in his speech is, of course, irony. I can't think of anything more ironic than Donald Fagan being in a rock band that depends on the sell of records and concert tickets for survival. I mean, Donald Fagan is notoriously crotchety, but let's redefine that trait as brutal honesty, quality that is aptly manifested in his second verse on Reeling in the Years. You've been telling me you're a genius since you were 17, and all the time I've known you, I still don't know what you mean. The weekend trip to college didn't turn out like you planned. The things that they pass for knowledge, I can't understand. It didn't turn out like you planned. The things that pass for knowledge, I can't understand. The complexity, irony, honesty, and the pursuit of artistic perfection. That's what makes every Steely Dan song a highbrow mind bender. I mean, that's a big reason why we dig the inimitable, wry genius of Donald Fagan and his late partner, Walter Becker, in the first place. They were the duo that conceived Reeling in the years and had the foresight to bring in Elliot Randall to fulfill one of the hottest guitar performances of the rock era. Lastly, at POR, we want to acknowledge to all the amazing players on the studio recording of Reeling in the Years. Jeff Skunk Baxter and Denny Dias on rhythm guitar. It's Victor Feldman with the percussion. Donald Fagan on piano and lead and backing vocals. Walter Becker plugging the bass. And Elliot Randall, the lead guitar. Of course, Jim Hodder on drums. Hodder and Becker provided backing vocals with Fagan to achieve that magical three-part harmony on the songs, just heavy chorus. Truly magnificent. 
Steely Dan's incredible musical contributions have inspired all of us as we continue reeling in the years and stowing away the time. Those beautiful memories that uh, seem to grow richer every day because of their incredible music. Leave us a comment about this amazing song and the genius of Steely Dan. What does this song make you think of? What are your experiences? Uh, I would love to hear them. If you like our content, we do invite you to be a full-time part of POR by subscribing below. Check out our other content on Patreon to help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.